hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Yuri Kopetsky. I'm here uh, as representative of Honeywell. And I'm here today to tell you how we have migrated our smart thermostat cloud solution to service fabric. First, let me say a few words about Honeywell itself. Honeywell is one of the Fortune 100 companies. Uh, we operate in 70 countries and have more than 131,000 employees worldwide. Uh, we are making a lot of cool stuff, both digital and physical. And our business spans from smart homes through connected factories towards aerospace. And Honeywell Home and Building Technologies, the division I am part of, have its products installed in more than 150 million homes and 10 million buildings worldwide. Um, my team uh, have more than five years of experience developing cloud solutions for smart connected devices. Smart thermostat cloud. What can you imagine uh, under these three words? Uh, basically, uh, it's a cloud solution that provides three main capabilities. Device management, telemetry processing, and command and control. What can you imagine under each of those bullets? Device management uh, from associating a device with a customer through firmware upgrade over the air, all the standard stuff. Telemetry processing, uh, mostly uh, receiving and caching that, uh, data from devices to be able to quickly serve requests from our customers to receive uh, status of their device over the internet. And command and control, uh, control of your device over the internet. Typical scenario, you are leaving work early, and it's middle of the winter. And you have your thermostat set up in your schedule that uh, it's keeping your house pretty cold to save money. But you want to have your house warm when you get home. So before leaving work, you will just open our application in your smartphone change the set point, and voila, when you uh, return home, temperature is uh, as you desire it. Or you can use our Geofins feature and just simply let the location services on your uh, phone decide when you are close enough home to actually increase the temperature. Also, uh, because of the telemetry processing in the cloud, uh, we can make some enhancements without uh, changing firmware on the devices themselves. Uh, for example, we can uh, provide uh, customers with uh, alerting capabilities if temperature crosses some configured threshold. We can notify them over mobile app notification or via an email. What it brought us when we migrated to Service Fabric? One uh, advantage that was visibly, visible almost instantly was price reduction. Because of Service Fabric and the way how it aggregates services on uh, single machines, we were able to reduce number of virtual machines in our solution, thus reducing costs. Uh, speed, thanks to, thanks to data locality. We are using Actor Framework uh, to store data of our thermostats. And uh, by using that, we achieved tremendous speed uh, 99.9% .9 of calls that are requesting data that are cached in our system is faster than 50 milliseconds. And uh, automated deployments without downtime, that's one of the greatest features of Service Fabric. It allows you to do all the stuff around your application lifecycle management and upgrading. Application is now very easy solution, very easy exercise even with the uh, fallback uh, option when something goes wrong. Better scalability, adding new machines helps just uh, easily to scale out. And this is true microservice solution. We can introduce new services that uh, solves new unforeseen uh, requests very easily. Where we started, our second generation thermostat cloud it was second generation, but it was first that was really natively built for Azure. And it was based on cloud services and Azure service management, because nothing else was uh, available at the time. Uh, 
we used Orleans as our actor framework to store uh, our thermostats data. Orleans, by the way, now is open source, and you can uh, see their sources on GitHub. And the whole solution was designed with uh, Service Fabric in mind, because our friends in Microsoft, who helped us to design this uh, solution, told us that there is something coming, and we should be prepared for it. Uh, they also helped us to prepare, uh, saying what we should avoid to be able to easily migrate towards Service Fabric. So the migration later on was much easier. Challenges we saw with uh, cloud services. Mostly, it was extremely costly. Because of reliability, we had to include and introduce new VMs just to be reliable. For example, we ended up with uh, three machines running an API that was, they have utilization of CPU under 5% all the time. But because of reliability reasons, we had to have those machines there. Uh, microservices. It was possible but cumbersome to introduce new services. Uh, if you want to honor cloud services, you should just introduce a new role. But introducing new role means introducing new VMs. You have to pay for that. Uh, and Azure Service Manager is not easy to automate. Uh, you can automate it, of course. There is no issue around that. But achieving behavior that ser uh, Azure Resource Manager providing you by default, like in the bottom deployments and additive deployments, it requires a lot of boilerplate code that you would have to write yourself. So we just decided it's not worth the effort. And <laughs> one uh, tiny problem that uh, proven to be quite uh, big over the time, uh, we wanted to honor idea of compile once, deploy everywhere. And it's not easily possible with cloud services, because when you create cloud service deployment package, VM size is embedded into that package which means that all your testing environments have to be scaled as your production, at least in uh, the VM size. You, of course, can have a sm uh, small number of instances, but you have to have the big VMs as you have on your production. So when uh, Service Fabric finally came out, uh, we decided to redo the system to do an upgrade and move our solution towards Service Fabric. During that time frame, we also decided to do a few other investments, few other uh, pieces of work that uh, was A, uh, recommended to us by our friends in Microsoft, or uh, they, were, uh, they were things that we learned the hard way over the time when we were running our uh, cloud services solution. Uh, mainly, what we've done during the migration, we ported all ap applicable services to Service Fabric. It was like almost every single service, maybe with one exception. And uh, we decide as a strategic long-term investment to rewrite all our REST APIs to ASP.NET Core. Uh, not only because it's much easier to self-host ASP.NET Core applications, which is a requirement for Service Fabric, but also because all the development and performance improvements, everything is happening in the ASP.NET Core world not in the old ASP.NET. Uh, we also decided to fully utilize the Service Fabric Actor state. This helped us to achieve the data locality and the speed I was talking about. And also, because Azure Resource Manager was available at this time, we decided to do the whole deployment automa uh, automation. Infrastructure as a code and everything automate it as much as possible to achieve really just one-click deployments. The process of migration. Overall, it was very smooth. We haven't hit any hard uh, issues we couldn't solve. Uh, we haven't had to change the logic of our applications. That was uh, very uh, helpful and helped us uh, very much. Uh, only thing we have to somehow rewrite a little bit, but in the end it wasn't uh, as hard, was our thermostat actor that now is storing its state in service fabric uh, reliable actor state. Uh, of course, there were a few challenges we have to overcome. 
uh, but to be honest, most of those uh, you won't uh, meet today because they were uh, more of like a uh, price we've paid because we were using a few things uh, that were just freshly available or even in preview. Uh, one of the things, lack of uh, Azure Resource Manager documentation, it improved a lot <laughs> over the last year. And uh, in our case, it meant that we had to reverse engineer few few things when we are writing and creating our infrastructure templates. Uh, ASP.NET Core tooling in preview. That was one of the hardest issue, let's say, because the preview tooling with Visual Studio 2015 was really hard to work with. It had few issues we had to overcome, and overall, it was pretty painful to get everything working. Uh, one of the main challenges, let's say, was that, was that Service Fabric requires you to compile your projects in a 64-bit uh, platform, while only platform supported by preview tooling was any CPU. To get those two working together, you have to hack around it, around it a little bit if you want to reference between uh, those uh, projects. Uh, also, we hit some subtle differences between uh, Orleans API and Service Fabric Reliable Actors API, but those were really like small and tiny differences. Uh, I can, from top of my head, remember just one uh, memory leak we had because we were disposing timers improperly, but to fix it was really easy, and uh, since then we haven't had any issue. And also, uh, because of the different uh, hosting model that Service Fabric provides, we have to work a lot on uh, different monitoring uh, tools and different monitoring requirements. Previously, it was very easy. One machine was hosting single process, single service. Now, we have to be prepared that uh, our services are running together on one machine. There is multiple processes running. I was able to scratch just the surface. Please go to this website. There is a case study we have written together with our friends at Microsoft uh, that uh, uncovers the whole story of our migration. Please read it. And uh, if you will have any questions, any comments, I will be standing next to the Service Fabric booth for some time. So please stop by and ask any of your questions if you have any. Thank you very much, and please avoid the session. <laughs>